Good evening, my fellow friends, my fellow believer. From the studios of the Evangelist Ministry, we spread the good news about Jesus Christ and His saving grace. Our mission is to lead people into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ. My dear friends, the topic of tonight is the purpose of blessings. Have you ever think about the purpose of blessings? Have you ever think about why God blessed me in such a great way? Have you ever think about why God blessed me with salvation? My dear friends, this evening we open the book of Psalm 67. The Bible said, God be merciful to us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us that you might that you that your way might be now on earth your salvation among all nations let the people praise you oh god let all the people praise you oh let the nation be glad and sing for joy for you shall judge the people righteously and govern the nation on earth. Let people praise you, O oh God. Let all the people praise you. Then the earth shall yield her increase. God, our own God, shall bless us. God shall bless us and all the end of the earth shall fear him. What a wonderful, my dear friends. The topic of this evening is the purpose of blessings. Have you ever think about the purpose of blessings? Why God bless me in, in such a great way? And why God bless me with salvation? It's three questions, my dear friend, that uh, we should ask ourselves on a daily basis. Especially when you have no desires to serve God. My dear friends, the Lord bless us and makes His face shine on us so that His salvation, His ways, and His justice might be known for everyone. If you come back to the text that we read, it says 1 and 2, God be merciful to us and bless us. And cause his face to shine upon us that you might, that your way might be not on earth. So, my dear friends, the Lord bless us and make his face shine on us so that his salvation, his ways, and, and his justice might be now by everyone in this world. See, 
I don't know if you realize this, my friends. He make us in his own image. So we can be a blessing to others. That's why, my friends, he make us in his own image so we can be blessing to everyone. If you open the book of Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 said, For we are workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto God works, which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. Wow. Are we start understanding the purpose of blessing? It is God's nature to bless. This is no question about. It is God's nature to bless. However, we need to understand that His purpose is greatest, much greater than we might realize. His ultimate goal encompasses and for more than a simple making us happy, peaceful, protect us, or prosperous us. It's a lot more than that, my friend. My dear friends, in fact, it is never the Lord's intention for His blessing to end with us. When God bless you, Oh, God bless me. He wants us to be a blessing for somebody else. You see, his intention is not that when he bless us, that his blessing ending on us. No, his intention is this. God bless you. God bless me. And then I can be a blessing for others. This is the fact, my friends. In fact, God never, never, never intended that. It is never the Lord's intention for His blessing to end with us. Rather, He wants them to flow out to others as part of His plan for the whole earth. He blessed me. He wants me to be a blessing for somebody else. That's why God blessed me in such a great way, because He wants me to be a blessing for somebody else. Verse 2 said that you might, they said that your way might be known in earth. Do you understand? That your way might be known in earth. Your salvation among all nations. So, in fact, it's never the Lord intention for his blessing to end with us. Rather, he wants those blessings to flow out to others as part of his plan for the whole earth. Listen, if you have your Bible, open the, the book of John 15:8. What the Bible said, by this, my Father is glorified, that you might bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. Let's think about that. What happened? What happened? Let's think about when we not bear fruit. How many of you this morning can, can tell me that you bring the gospel to somebody? How many of you can tell me this evening that you evangelize certain people in this week? Let's think about it. The Bible says, by this, my Father is glorified that you might be a much fruit, so you will be my disciple. The only way that we can be his disciple then is what? To bear much fruit in his name. Let's think about the book of Romans 8.29. The book of Romans 8.29 said, For whom he 
foreknew, he also predestinated to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. I think that we start to understand the purpose of blessings. As we see in today's Psalm, Psalm 67, the Lord bless all so that his salvation, his ways, and his justice might be known by every nation and people group around the whole world. That's why, my friends, do you understand what I said? As we see in today's Psalms, Psalm 67, the Lord bless us. The Lord bless every one of us with one intention. That his salvation, his ways, his justice might be known by every nation and people group around the world through us. He wants to use us. He wants to use you and I to bring the blessing of salvation, to let people know about God. Do you understand? This is that, you, that your way might be known on earth, your salvation among all nations. Let the people praise you, Lord. My dear friends, God always acting with this larger picture in mind. His plan is not a small plan. His plan is a big plan. I want you to think about that. God's plan is it's not a small plan just for today and forget about the rest of the day or forget about the rest of the week or forget about the rest of the year. But my friends, this thing I can tell you tonight, He's always acting with the larger picture in mind, even while working personally in each believer's life. You see, he's working in me and in you, but he has a lot of biggest plan. He wants to bless you and bless me, but he expecting that when he bless me, I become a blessing for somebody else. This is this is biblical, my friends. So, my dear friends, he's always acting with this large picture in mind, even while he's working personally in each believer's life. First, he bless us with salvation. Let's think about that. Maybe you can understand better. First, he bless us with salvation. Romans 10, 9 says, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Okay. Now, he bless us with salvation. Now we say, but then give us a commandment. God give us an audit. And what is that? Let's take a look Matthew 28, 19. Matthew 28, 19 said, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Wow, you see, God bless you with salvation. Now he wants you to go and preach the gospel, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, that many nations will come saved. Just the same way you were saved, the same way people are going to come into Jesus Christ. Let's think about that. He bless us with salvation, and then he give us a commandment. What was the commandment? Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of, of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Then 
some other people become saved too. Through faith in Jesus Christ, but God wants to use you personally to preach the gospel, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, let's think about this. Knowing this, knowing this that God bless us with salvation and then give us a commandment to preach the gospel. Knowing this should fill us with an awesome yet humble sense. Meekness. We should be meek and humble when we know that God wants to use us to enlarge his kingdom. But he wants to give us the opportunity to work for him in such a way. So, knowing this should fill us with an awesome yet humbling sense of significance. Every Christian has a part in helping others know and understand the one true God. We should be a helper. For people who doesn't know Jesus Christ. We should have the time. To preach the gospel. And to lead people to Christ. Listen. God bless you. God wants you to be a blessing for somebody else. <clears throat> God bless me. And God wants me to be a blessing. He wants me to be a blessing for somebody else. Let's think about 2 Corinthians chapter 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 3 and 4. Say, bless be God. Even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Father of mercies and the God of all comfort. Who comfort us in all tribulations that we might, hey, you see that? That we might be able to comfort them which are in any tribulations. By the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comfort of God. Let's think about that. He blessed me with comfort. He wants me to be a blessing and comfort to somebody else. Let's think about that, my friends. If you realize, my friend, this, this evening, that each blessing that benefits us personally is also intended to help other people's life. Have you think about that? Each blessing that, that benefits us personally is also intended to help further his plans for the kingdom. When he blessed me with salvation, I should go and preach the gospel and lead people to, to Christ and then we can enlarge the, his kingdom. The kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, verse 4 said, Oh, let the nations be glad and sing for joy. You shall judge the people righteous and govern the nation on earth. My dear friends, on the other hand, let's think about this. And uh, On the other hand, we sometimes we might not receive things that we want. Have you, have you think about that? Sometimes we bring our petition to God. And some of those petitions never materialize, never become true. You might think about that. Why? Well, on the other hand, we sometimes might not receive things we want because they don't contribute to get higher purpose. Do you understand? It wasn't in God's plans. My petition wasn't in God's plans. It wasn't not good at all 
for God's plans. That's why God never gave it to me. So, on the other hand, we sometimes might not receive things we want because they don't contribute to God's higher purpose. But what the Bible is telling us about that, my friends, if we open 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18, said, in everything give thanks. In everything give thanks. Wow. The Bible said, in everything give Give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Wow, my friends, I tell you, we might not receive things we want because they don't contribute to God's higher purpose. But we have to thank Him anyway. But, but, if we fit our request into the Lord's greatest plan, we position ourselves to be used mightily, mightily by Him. Do you see what I mean? Okay, God doesn't give me what I want, but if I fit my request into the Lord's greatest plan, I position myself to be used in a mighty way by God. Because it is not my way. It's God's way. If it's not God's way, it's no way at all, my friends. You see, the book of Galatians chapter 1 verse 9 said, For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with knowledge of his will and in all wisdom and a spiritual understanding. Wow! This is a good message, my friends. Sometimes we're not too excited because my petition never materialized. God never gave it to me, my petitions. But now, Colossians say that I have to be wise and understandable why God will not give it all my petitions. So, but if we fit our request into the Lord's greatest plans, we position ourselves to be used in a mighty way by Him. When your Father, when your Father bless you, Let's think about that. When your Father, the Heavenly Father, bless you, He's not only doing something just for you. When He bless you, He wants you to be a blessing for somebody else. This is the point, my friends. When God bless you, you have to be a blessing for somebody else. So, when your Father bless you, He is not only doing something for you, He, he is also doing something and through you to affect the life of other people. You see, when he bless you, it's because he wants to bless somebody else also. At the same time, through you. So, do we understand the purpose of blessing? If you do, let's get to a conclusion. One thing is, is, uh, is very clear to you this evening. Don't let the pleasure, the pleasure and comfort of His blessing blind you to that intention. Do you understand what I mean? Don't let the pleasure and comfort of His blessing blind you to their intended, intended purpose. Sometimes God bless me with salvation. Whoa! That's good enough for me. I'm safe. Now I'm going to go sit down in my chair and listen to the pastor the rest of my life. Oh no, my friends. Now you got to be a blessing for somebody else. The same way you're being saved, the same way God wants to use you to bless somebody else with salvation. Let's think about it. So don't let the pleasure and comfort of his blessing blind you to the intended purpose. Ask the Lord how to use, pray, 
pray the Lord how to use his kindness, his blessings as a way to point people to him. That's the only thing I can tell you, my friend. Ask God. Let's pray tonight. Let's pray and ask God how to use his kindness and his blessings as a way to point people to Christ. My dear friends, I hope and I pray that you understand the purpose of blessing. God bless you and God bless America because America is a wonderful place to live. God bless you and God bless America. The America of my dream. Have a good night and I see you soon, my friend. In the same channel, we're going to be here again and again trying to please God and trying to bring the gospel, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Have a good night.